tutorial from uh, UPVC Spare Spore Repairs. Today we're looking at uh, replacing door hinges on the old cold seal and some Anglian products. And we'll show you how to do that um, with a little bit of help from some still photography and uh, talk you through it. These are the hinges that we're looking at. So they were most commonly used in the uh, 80s and 90s by both Cold Seal and Anglian. And the telltale on this hinge is that if you open the door, you'll see a grub screw here and a dummy stud at the bottom. So this allows you to be able to remove the hinge in a methodical manner and we'll go through that shortly but this is the hinge that we're looking at when the hinge was originally put onto the door frame this section here is screwed through the back so to be able to access the screws at the back of here you need a two millimeter allen key to remove this um, allen screw once you've removed it you should be able to slide that off which will expose the hinge. So once you've removed the uh, or unscrewed the Allen screw at the side here and you've lifted this off which is your cover plate you'll do that to both the top bottom and middle hinge. Now clearly you're going to need a lift here because you're now going to be wanting to lift the whole of the door off its hinges. Now you're going to need an allowance of at least 25 to 30 millimeters at the top of the door to allow you to be able to release this from its hinge as you'll see as we lift it up the stud at the bottom is anchored into the bottom of the hinge so it's got to be able to clear so that's why we're looking for 25 to 30 millimeters of space at the top of the door so to enable you to get the front plate off, we suggest either a, a scraper or a little pen knife, either towards the bottom or towards the top. Just simply insert it and it will come away. And that will reveal the plate behind that anchors through into the door, which has got pins in it, which has got to be removed first. So having removed the grub screw and taken the cover off and lifted the door out that exposes a plastic plate here which you simply slide up and that shows you where the fixings are for the hinge. Remove the screws and pull this away. Remember it's got two pins on the back for stability inside the door remove that and you've removed the hinge completely. In most instances where doors are fitted in UPVC there is a distance called the overlap. That's the distance that the seal sits back from the edge of the frame. So as you open your door you will see that position. What you've got to identify is that your hinges are actually sitting in the correct place. So before you start dismantling any hinges, the idea is you run a pencil mark down the back of the door opener before you open it, open the door and identify that that distance there is either eight or nine millimeters or around about that but you must do that to all positions in front of each hinge to identify whether or not the hinge is in the correct place or not if it's not we have first of all got to reposition the hinge slightly to enable you to identify the correct overlap. 
The hinges, once you've decided that the door is in the correct position, now require drawing round with a pencil so that you know exactly the position it is before you remove the hinge. Like so. So you've safely removed the door, having drawn round the hinge with a pencil. We're removing the plates and you can see the plate below. We'll take the screws out of there now. And that's the hinge removed. So we need to determine the centre line of this hinge. So if we measure the pencil lines, this one's 45 millimetres, so the centre point is 22 and a half. So that's marked there. And then I'd use a square. Just run a square right the way across the door. And that gives you the centre line of that hinge. So having determined the centre line, I would just shorten the square slightly and put it down the side here and extend the line down the side of the door. So we've got the centre line determined but be able to be able to fit down and secure the uh, template which is going to be put on the surface next you need to clean off the burrs from the screws that were in there previously so I would use either a little chisel or a pen, a, a pen knife but always pushing the blade away from you. So we've cleaned off the burrs and we've now got to introduce the template. Now the template will come with three of them available for each of the hinges and what we do is where the word edge is cut the template level with the edge indicated take that away now this edge indicates this side which is where the hinge sits so we turn it round offer it up to the edge and at the same time looking for the mark that we created when we measured the center we align that correctly and we align that correctly with the line that drops down this side of the door edge that now has placed that template in the correct position. Well, we've got the template now set in place and on this occasion we've held it down with cello tape and the next requirement you will need to find is a 5mm and a 3mm high speed steel drill bit and then we're going to show you how to disassemble the new hinge to put in place after you've drilled the holes. This hinge comes pre-assembled with the pin already in position. You can see from the indentation or the printing on the top of the hinge, it clearly tells you which is the top. The pin is firstly extracted out of the top and usually the easiest way is to use one of the screws that's supplied with the hinge and just simply tap it from the bottom. The hinge will be removed you can part the two individual parts ready for assembly onto the door. Having disassembled these parts the only piece we're interested in now is this one which we're going to fit onto the door sash. It has a cover plate which has to be removed by taking out one screw from the rear. Screw is there which gives us this piece which is separate and allows us to put that onto the door sash. Now we're ready to affix this to the door sash by drilling the six holes. Two of them are the five millimeter holes, remember, and the other four are the three millimeter holes to accommodate the screws to hold it in place. Five millimeter holes will take the spigots that go through the, the uh, door and the others align up immediately for the screws. So we've drilled our holes and then we've removed the template and cleared away and cleaned any of the residue from the adhesive. So we're going to put the zinc fixing plate now back into the main body of the hinge 
and the bolt head at the top is designed to fit into this opening here. So if we carefully insert that and at the same time allowing the sp spigot pins to come through the rear of the hinge plate. Resecuring re the uh, plate, the spigot pins come out of the back and it may be that in offering it up, because it's a 5mm hole, you may need to tap it home slightly. Then using the securing screw supplied, so that's secure now. And repeating those procedures for the other two hinges. Having secured all three uh, hinge plates, we won't put the top covers back on until you have re the door into the hinges on the outer frame because you may need to make some minor adjustments here by releasing the four screws ever so slightly and inserting an allen key into the end of this bolt it allows the body of the hinge to move laterally to give you the minor adjustments required to keep the door in full alignment. Moving along to the hinge part that's still attached to the main door frame we've removed the cover cap, we've removed the door sash, we've already drawn around the outer rim in pencil so now we need to remove the attachment screws. With all the screws removed we can now take the hinge plate off the outer frame. Turning our attention now to the outer frame that's attached to your wall, we need to measure the height of the hinge, which in this instance is 110 millimeters. So we need to find the halfway mark, which is 55. So if we mark that, and then taking a square off the edge of the frame, we transpose that line all the way across and just down the face at this side. Having marked the centre, you use the corresponding line on the jig to place the jig in, in its correct position. This alignment and also this edge flush with the edge of this profile. Having securely fixed the jig to the profile with a clear tape, now you need to drill two 5mm holes and three 3mm three holes. So we've drilled the holes, we've removed the template and we've cleaned the surface of all the adhesive debris and pencil marks. So having previously disassembled the hinge, this is the only part now that we're interested in for reassembling onto the outer frame. This part also is accompanied by two packers and the only one required to suit the cold seal frames is the wider of the two. The hinge is designed to accept this packer with two rectangular slots and their corresponding protrusions on the spare part. Now the hinge assembly, including the packer, is offered into the holes top and bottom, securely pressed home, remembering that one end has got the indentation that clearly says top. Now you could get it wrong at this point, but remember top. And then you offer the three fixing screws, securely holding it into the frame. Repeating the process for the other two hinges as well. We're now in a position where we're ready to reassemble the door. So with some help uh, again in lifting, offer the hinges, all three, in together. And at the same time then, offer in the hinge pin from the top, carefully sliding it through until it engages with the bottom half of the hinge. And once it's in place, you can release the, uh, 
the door it should be stable um, but there will be need probably for some minor adjustment which we'll show you what to do shortly. We're going to show you uh, the three adjustments available on this hinge and they are sighted here, here and here. In order to make the lateral movement left to right on the hinge the first thing you need to do is slacken off slightly the four screws. That will enable you then to insert the 5mm Allen key into the bolt head which will then allow this hinge to move let laterally left and right. What I would normally do is put a small pencil mark down the face of the hinge and onto the door and then as you offer your Allen key into the bolt here as you turn it, you'll be able to see exactly how far the door has moved. Remembering, of course, that we're still trying to achieve the eight to nine millimeters of cover under the gasket. Having completed the adjustments, you simply tighten the four screws. To enable you to activate the second adjustment on the hinge, it's necessary to insert some small tool in the bottom which simply pushes the hinge pin back out of the head. Once the pin is protruding at the top, you need to push the locking bush back into the body of the hinge which will then allow the bolt to rotate. And the third adjustment to this hinge is from the base of the hinge body with a 5mm Allen key inserted. This is the movement using the Allen key to move the door either up as we are showing here or alternatively down. If during the adjustment you're wanting to move it up then move one hinge only. When you have got to the correct position then you must bring the remaining two hinges up into the similar position and just tweak them ever so slightly. If however you discover that you need to lower the door then rotating the Allen key in the anti-clockwise direction will lower it. However, lowering one hinge will have no effect unless the other two hinges are already lowered. So therefore you need to lower all three hinges until you're satisfied with the height and then make sure that the remaining two hinges are adjusted back up again to collectively take the distribution of the weight. In closing, just to finish off, there are two cover caps, one for the top of the hinge and one for the bottom. They've got two small ribs on and two accompanying holes at the top and at the bottom of the hinge to insert them into, clipped in there and the same at the bottom. And then finally you put the top cover cap on and secure it from the back with the screw that we took out earlier from UPVC Space for Repairs. Thank you and goodbye for now.